And I am Meg Lewis, Communications Manager for the City of Independence, and I am joined today with a uh, group of our directors to talk a little bit more about the severe weather that is coming into our area later this week. So we're going to start with our Director of Health and Animal Services. Christina, can you introduce yourself? And let's talk a little bit about why this weather system is so dangerous. Sure. My name is Christina Heinen. I'm Director of Health and Animal Services for the City of Independence. Um, so this winter storm that we have coming up, we're going to see exceptionally cold weather, very strong wind chill, and that's dangerous for a lot of people who spend any amount of time outside being exposed. Whether you're outside hiking, whether you're outside shoveling snow, um, trying to walk somewhere, or whether you're an individual who is houseless in our area, these are some very severe cold weather that can trigger hypothermia, frostbite, um, similar things. Hypothermia is something where your body is able to not produce enough heat um, compared to the amount of heat loss that it's seen. So in those cases, your body moves as much um, warmth to its core to try to keep your uh, organs functioning. And you'll start to see, um, you know, that, that pain in your fingertips, or your nose, your ears, and that could possibly trigger frostbite if it's not reacted to fast enough. We recommend, of course, layers while you're outside. Um, multiple layers, make sure you protect those ears, the nose, the fingers. Make sure you keep um, as dry and as warm as possible. And take those frequent breaks and be able to get back inside. Uh, if you're shoveling, of course, we want you to watch for any um, chest pain. For those who aren't used to such strenuous activity, um, you need to really watch yourself, take frequent breaks, make sure you get back inside. Thank you. And what we are seeing also on all of this is if you do not have to be out, take every step to stay indoors throughout um, the storm system, particularly on Thursday, but as much as possible on Friday. So we're going to transition a little bit and talk a little bit about the public safety side of things. We anticipate when there is snow that there is the potential for car accidents. So Chief Dustman, can you talk a little bit about how people can prepare their cars for winter weather, but also what happens if they are in an accident? Absolutely. Um, so uh, Meg, you just hit the nail on the head. Uh, the, the big thing from the public safety side is if you do not have to be out, please, please, please stay home in any sort of hazardous condition. Um, find a, a warm spot and a nice movie to stick on and, and stay home. Uh, let the street crews and, and all the professionals that are out there do their things and make things safe again uh, to uh, be able to travel. But uh, if you do have to be out, it's important to have warm clothes, extra layers of clothes, um, blankets, things like that. Um, just in case you do get stranded, uh, your car not able to be uh, running and so you didn't have heat or anything like that. Um, again, plan ahead, leave early, um, plan for those, those times that's going to take you longer to get places, um, maybe plan your route so that you're around places that you could seek shelter if you needed to, like a convenience store or things that would be open as opposed to uh, back roads or, or more isolated areas. Uh, if you are in a car crash um, during any sort of an inclement weather or any other time, the process is easy. It is the same. You call 911. Uh, don't be surprised that if we are inundated with emergency calls for service, we go into emergency operations mode. If there are no injuries in a crash, we may ask you to uh, walk that report in or phone that report in once the storm passes by at a later time. Uh, also, do not be surprised if you get instructions from our incredibly professional folks at our Emergency Communications Center um, that your car may be left there and not towed out um, until after crews get a chance to clear the roadway. So um, both of those things are, are very possible. Um, so just be prepared for that. But again, the biggest uh, ounce of prevention is if you do not have to be out, uh, stay home. And Chief Dustman, if they are in an accident, they should try to get their vehicle into a place where it's not in the way, correct? Correct. Yeah. Usually, um, as with any any time you have a motor vehicle crash, uh, if the vehicles are drivable and no one is injured, um, we try to get those off the roadway, off the main thoroughfare, so the traffic uh, 
and flow as normal as possible. Also prevents secondary accidents, uh, which we see very frequently with other crashes, people onlookers or, or people not paying attention, seeing people abruptly stopping in front. So um, always a good idea to get the vehicles off the roadway, uh, if, if at all possible. Thank you. And Chief Short, from the fire perspective, we will see a lot of space heaters, wood stoves, uh, fireplaces in use over the next few days. What are some recommendations from the fire department to keep everybody safe? Yeah, as you know, when it gets colder, people um, want to be warmer than what they really anticipate. They have a little anxiety to make things even warmer than they normally would. So we see a lot of alternative heating sources. Um, things that we need to just remember when we're using our the different alternatives would be using electric um, type blankets or heaters, things of that nature. You want to be careful of um, where you place those. Make sure that they're not close to any kind of combustibles or anything that might catch fire. You also want to ensure that you don't overload circuits. So in other words, you don't want two or three of these uh, alternative sources on one circuit uh, per se in your house as it could overload and actually cause heating uh, of the electrical cords themselves. Um, if you are using um, your fireplace, obviously make sure that you've had your, you know, uh, hopefully you've had your chimney serviced, um, <clears throat> but don't overload it again with wood because even if you only have a small amount of creosote in there, if you overload it, it could potentially start a um, fire in your chimney as well. And then finally, try to avoid any alternative sources that produce carbon monoxide in your house, um, whether it be using your actual gas stove to heat your house with, um, or using any kind of propane type of heaters or kerosene types of heaters, and as well as running, an, if if by chance the power would go off, running a generator inside of your house. Um, so again, be very careful of all of those things. And one thing people don't often think about is the air intake into their homes. And when we have strong winds and snow, there's a potential that that air intake is blocked. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, and, and it's not that it's blocked, it's that it's changed its pathway. So it's not not uncommon that in a, a windy situation and with your heat running a lot, when that wind is blowing, it can actually force the air back down your exhaust, pushing that CO into your house. So, you know, again, it's it's good to have a CO detector, but if you have a gas furnace, there is always that chance with a strong wind um, you could have that reverse flow or that negative flow into your house as well. And last thing, we are often telling people to um, make sure that they do not plug in uh, space heaters to an extension cord, correct? Only if that st extension cord is rated to handle that, which means it would generally have to be a lower gauged cord or a inline fused cord in order to extend it. And if in doubt, read the instructions. That's correct. All right, so um, Chief Short mentioned it a little bit. One thing that could happen in this storm event is the potential for power outage. We have had the very, very cold um, situation in 2021 where we saw some um, rolling power outages required um, from the Southwest Power Pool. We are in contact with them, and um, our director, Jim Nail, can talk a little bit more about what the situation is right now. Meg, this is Jim Nail, director of IPL. And at the moment, the only advisory that has come out of Southwest Power Pool is a weather advisory, um, which is very similar to what you would get from our, our news channels. Um, and that advisory basically alerts all the generator owners in the in the region to take steps to make sure those generators are available. Uh, here in Independence, uh, in addition to our normal uh, diesel supply, we've added uh, diesel number one, which is a little thinner and uh, means less likely that it'll gel up in the line. So a lot of precautions have been taken since the 21 storm, and we think we're in, in pretty good condition. Uh, Southwest Power Pool right now is not projecting any outages. What we can't predict is 
you know, how wet and heavy is the snow going to be? Is that going to impact trees, which then impact lines? Uh, vehicle accidents that impact our utility poles or our, our ground level uh, installations. Uh, so those kind of outages, uh, we always are on standby waiting to see what happens and uh, we'll have crews on alert ready to go in, in case it does. If someone does experience an outage, the best thing they can do is call our outage line. It's 325-7550. And please use a phone that is associated with your account because our outage management system uh, tries to automate this as much as possible to assist our operators and uh, our crews in getting to the right location. And it's first going to try to attach that outage call to the account with that phone number. So if it's if you're borrowing a neighbor's phone or you're calling from somewhere else, uh, then it ends up generating a lot of extra outage notices on the map. And one thing um, both uh, you and Chief Short often have to deal with is the conversation about generators. So um, Chief Short mentioned if a generator is needed due to a powder outage, please keep it outdoors. But another question that we often re receive um, during a power outage is how long can food and other items be kept safely in a refrigerator? Um, Christina, can you talk a little bit about what to do there? Well, if you do lose power, what we'll always talk about is it's important to keep your fridge, your freezers closed. They're going to work best um, if they are closed, if they have good seals. I mean, there's a lot of variables here, but um, in most cases, if power is able to get back on by that next morning, your food should be absolutely fine. It's really important if you get a chance, if you have the ability um, to have a thermometer or something in there to check. If it's below 45 degrees in your fridge, your food should be fine. Fortunately, with this cold event, it is unlikely to get very warm very quickly, but um, it is always important to um, keep the food safety in mind if you have a power outage. Um, we are also having the potential for frozen pipes when it comes to temperatures this cold. So um, Dan Montgomery is with our water department, and he can talk a little bit more about ways you can help prevent that in your home. Yes, my name is Dan Montgomery, Water Systems Director, and one of the simplest ways is at this stage is just make sure you have allow warmer air to circulate around the pipes. So what I've encouraged people to do is open their underneath their kitchen sinks, anywhere where you have water that could possibly, especially if it's on an outside wall, uh, that's the first thing I would look at. And the other thing is, is if you've uh, had experienced this in the past where you've had frozen water lines, that type of thing, uh, you kind of know that you have that occurring in your home, then you might want to go to the highest place in your house and open a like a faucet just a little bit, like run a pencil type stream, very small stream, let it run just to keep the water moving. But that's only if you have experienced this in the past. But uh, if it actually is froze and that type of thing, you're probably going to have to contact a plumber because you don't want any open flames or anything like that to try to thaw it yourself. You'd probably do it with a hairdryer or something very simple. But so those are the type of things I would, you know, suggest. And we all have all this stuff out on the, 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 our site. So Meg's shaking her head. So she knows that you can go out there and see all kinds of detail information and stuff that you should have done before now. Uh, but if it happens now, this is kind of what I would encourage. And, and of course, if you have a, a water leak in your house, uh, first thing I would do is try to go shut it off. So prepare yourself by knowing where your shutoff is in your house right now ahead of time. And if you do need to have running water, need to contact us. The emergency number is 816-325-7640. That's the after hours calls the water plant. They can get somebody out to, to hopefully get that shut off. And then uh, if you have questions about your bill, that type of thing, you can always call customer service during the day and get a contact there. We have folks 325-7378. So those are some things I would encourage. And we have been sharing information over the last few days on ways to help keep your um, pipes from freezing. We'll continue to share that information, but we'll also include a link um, with this video so that you have that information at your um, fingertips. Um, last but not least, we are going to talk about street streets and the snow response. Um, and Zan, you are our chief of streets. Can you give us a little bit of information on what you are preparing for? That's probably works better. Um, so 
Yeah, we uh, we are still um, being that we're more than 24 hours out. Uh, we're still looking at a few different weather forecast services to try and help determine still what our response level is going to be. Obviously, um, whatever it is, we are fully staffed this year for the first time in a couple of years. So that's a you know little hooray for us. Uh, but uh, we will be in a full response uh, no matter what happens, um, trying to make sure that everybody's able to get to their holiday plans, uh, and including our staff here. Um, as it sits right now, we're still looking at forecasts that are anywhere from an inch to eight inches, you know, um, on Thursday, uh, with most of that being Thursday during the day. Uh, what we're planning on doing then is we will have staff in um, starting Wednesday night, Wednesday evening. They'll be monitoring the roads, doing some pre-treatment, uh, doing so like that. Uh, the way that the residents can most help us is, and it's been said a number of times already, uh, please, if you do not have to get out, don't get out. Um, it just the other cars being on the road greatly impacts our ability to be able to clear clear the roads effectively and quickly. Uh, the more traffic that we have to drive around, the more traffic we have to get around. Um, as cars drive down the roads, it pushes material in areas that we've already plowed and pushes that material back onto the roads. So we have to go back over um, in a lot of cases. So uh, just having open and clear roads really makes it a lot easier for us to to treat. Um, and being that most of the snow that we're going to see is going to be during the day on Thursday, um, you know, it, it is one of those things that it's not an overnight thing where we know we've got clear roads. So um, outside of that, if you do not have to park on the street, if you have off street parking, uh, driveways, garages, anything like that, um, you know, please make sure you're not parking on the street. And if you do have to park on the street, uh, try and park on one side of the street. So we're not parking cars on both sides of the street. It makes it very, very difficult for us to get our plows safely down the roads. Um, those are accidents that happen every year, um, uh, tight situations and, and slippery roads for even our drivers to be on. And, you know, things happen, accidents happen, and, and vehicles get hit. Um, that's never a fun thing for anybody. So, um, and sometimes if, they're, if it's too narrow, too tight, we have to just not even go down some of those roads because it's not safe for our drivers and our trucks to go down those areas. So... Um, you know, like I said, uh, just staying off the roads as much as possible and keeping your vehicles off the roads as much as possible would be, be nice. Um, outside of that, some of the challenges that we're really going to face, no matter how much snow we get in this event, uh, it's going to come down to those, those temperatures. So since we are looking at negative overnight temperatures for a couple days in a row, uh, the, the materials that we use to treat the roads, treat the snow and salt, uh, it's just not effective. Um, it, it, it once it gets below five or six degrees that that those materials really just don't work so we're going to be limited to plowing and treating during the daytime and overnight um, work is going to be solely just pretty much plowing because the treatment won't work um, you know we'll we'll get out and we'll clear the roads as best as possible but you know another side effect of more people out and about and driving around means that in those lower traffic residential roads uh, that take us the longest time to get to uh, that really packs that stuff down. And when you have that snowpack on those roads, and coupling it with the super low temperatures and the treatment not being to being effective, that's a um, couple, anybody who was here a couple of years ago will really remember this, that um, back uh, when we had that February storm a couple of years back where it was negative 20 for like two weeks straight, uh, just it, you really, you can't get that stuff off the roads no matter what you do. So um the uh, the last thing I would say is we understand that you know there's holiday parties and holiday um, events that are going along for everybody. Like I said, I'd like to get my guys home to uh, to those holiday uh, and family get-togethers and stuff as well. But um, please bear bear with us as we're going through this. We are going to get to those residential roads, those lower traffic roads, as soon as possible. But uh, you know, as a safety factor, we really need to focus on those higher priority, higher traffic roads first. So. Uh, residential uh, roads probably will not be touched until uh, after any snow that we're getting has stopped. So we will focus on those mains and second priority roads, getting those fully cleared out. Once those snow has actually stopped, we'll go back to one final pass to fully open and clear all those mains and seconds, and then we'll get into those residential roads. So which means that if we get maybe four inches or so of snow, um, it may be 12 to 18 hours before we're actually able to get into effectively all of our crews getting into those residential areas. And um, if we get six or eight inches of snow, it could be a full 24 hours before as a city across the entire city, we're in, in those residential areas.
Um, and then if you, I apologize, Mick, uh, if you uh, do need to report a concern, uh, please call 325-SNOW. Thanks. It is um, important to also emphasize all of our streets are a priority, but we base the level of the street by the traffic that is on them. So when Zan is mentioning those priority or main streets, he's generally talking about those four lane corridors in our community that bring the highest traffic. That is not to say that our residential streets are not important to um, the response here. They are. The safety of all of our citizens is very, very important. It also impacts our ability at times for our first responders to get into those streets. So clearing those streets is very, very important. Finally, we cannot plow ice. It is um, plowing is to create traction, not to necessarily clear off the roads. So we have a lot of citizens that ask us questions about why can't I see the street? Um, the goal is to create traction for our um, citizens to move around, not necessarily clear the street. And Zan is phenomenal ex explaining the uh, science of ice and um, the salt that we use. We could do an entire series on that, but we um, will share more information throughout this event as needed on that. Last thing, is there any final piece of advice from this team um, that our citizens need or would you think would be beneficial as they prepare for the storm? Well, Meg, one thing that we didn't mention is that in the event of a power outage, um, you know, we can't guarantee how quickly that's gonna be restored, obviously, because we don't know in advance what caused it. So it is, it is important that for any of your battery operated devices, have those charged up and ready to go so that if you do lose power, you've got them available to use for as long as, as possible. That's a good point. Um, thank you, Jim. Um, Chief Dustman, Chief Short, anything else you would mention? I think you, you hit the nail on the head. Just stay home if you can, be safe, watch out for our street crews and all the folks that are out there uh, providing city services um, so that uh, we can get through this just fine like we have many, many times before. And we will be providing updates as the forecast becomes more concrete. There are still some variables on the snow amounts and snow types. If it is a wet snow, it is easier to plow. If it is a dry snow, it tends to blow more, which means our crews have to blow, um, move the same snow back and forth across the roads. We will um, be providing updates um, throughout the week as this is um, progressing. The Sermon Center is open as a warming site, and um, we are working to connect as many people with uh, overnight sheltering as possible. So um, thank you all. For joining us today and Zan. Okay. Yep. I apologize. I got one uh, one last thing I was going to mention. You talked about the Sermon Center um, mm -hmm. and it just um, something that that we do see our drivers see a lot as they're out and about is um, uh, the older population of independence. They, they seem to really love getting out and pushing and shoveling the snow, shoveling their driveways um, in, in the wee hours of the night or early morning um, or in the middle of an event. Um, just as a, you know, as a reminder, if you do have any loved ones that are, you know, uh, out and about and living by themselves or something, uh, you may check on them. Uh, something that we see a lot is uh, with the older population, especially getting out those cold weather, hitting them, the chest tightening up, and then potential, potential heart attacks, things like that um, caused by that, that severe cold and then the exertion and everything of doing that. So uh, being aware of your loved ones, maybe having that conversation with them and say, hey, it'll be okay. Wait until the daytime when it's not negative. 10 degrees to to do that stuff so well and unfortunately with this system and christina mentioned it earlier we have temperatures that could be um favorable for wind chills of up to negative 40 and in that temperature it can take minutes for you to get a frostbite and then onset of hypothermia can happen pretty quickly as well so again um thank you all for your time today and uh, we will um be in touch with everyone throughout the storm. Thank you.